Land has spirit. It has something to tell us and something to give. I'm Arita Byans, biologist and explorer. And if that makes you giggle because you think Google Earth knows it all, I have news for you because I'm discovering new places all the time. Meet Patrick McCormack, farmer in the Barren on the west coast of Ireland, on the fringes of Europe. And here, as Patrick says, there's more to the land than the eye can see. You know, you look out on that landscape there, you know, what you see, you know, what you see, like I see potentiality, I see abundance, I see generosity, mm. generosity. Um, you know, and at the same time, Arita, like I often say, you know, you know, there's a grief there, whatever it is, the grief in it. Our conversation earlier on, like, was about it's more of a feeling than what the naked eye can see. The sheer wildness of it, the sheer wonder of it, like, you know, and it's a harsh, cold reality, like, but it's, um, you know, there's something incredibly, <laughs> to be part of the falcons and the skylarks and, uh, you know, Blackbird and the, the lambs and the cows come and the foals arrive and Jesus like it's, it's just you know it's mind blowing really like you know in the world we live in like you know fact and fear are the great polluters of the modern mind so I've no doubt like that we are here now Arita mm. in this fort of people who lived here a couple of thousand years ago I've no doubt like that they're singing and dancing and watching us like you know and. Whatever we do, like, you know, I hope we do it in the appropriate manner and for the greater good, like, you know, that's it. North of the Barren lies Connemara, a land of mist and soft curves, bog fields and hundreds of lakes. In the vast peat moors, a man loses his grip on time and space. Days, months and years mean nothing to a centuries-old landscape that lives by its own laws and rules. Here, we'll meet with sheep farmer Brandon O'Malley. His family has worked this land for generations. Years ago, when, when we were kids, one of the jobs was when you came from school, you actually went to the mountain to count the cattle and have a look around, see was there anything wrong. And sometimes, um, particularly maybe a little later, maybe May time or whatever, they, there would be streams, there are streams and, and gloshes they're called, and they're very soft around the stream, sometimes very soft. So what oftentimes then the animals would go out to eat that because that would be the first growth. And when they go out there, they get stuck. And then you'd have to, you'd obviously see the animal in a hole. You wouldn't be able to pull them yourself. So you'd have to run home gather the family and maybe a few of the neighbours and run down and they would be following and you would, you would maybe have to hold their head up out of the water, you know, so they wouldn't get drowned and then the rest would put ropes on them and pull them out. Oftentimes you come down here and uh, you might just sit on a stone or something like that and just watch the world go by, you know. And it's that simple, it's not, it means everything to me, you know. You know, it's just, it's always been there and uh, for my life. And uh, you'd hope, I suppose, you know, that it stays in, in good enough condition to pass on to the next generation. You know, whoever will, whoever will be here. From this short journey, we've discovered that the Irish have a unique connection with the land that cannot be pinned down scientifically. We, modern city dwellers, have become cyclopses who see the world through one particular lens. What we need as a culture is a change of perspective, a different myth or story to believe in. That's why I will continue my expedition of the mind across different landscapes and cultures and bring back stories to share with you.